importance of meal planning. The objectives will be to state the meaning of meal planning and its importance, to enumerate the factors influencing meal planning, analyze the nutritional needs of members of family and modify the meals accordingly, define therapeutic diet and its need, enumerate the types of modification of normal diet, so to suggest modifications of a normal diet for people suffering from common diseases. Definition Meal planning is making a plan of meals with adequate nutrition for every member of the family within the available resources. The term available resources means whatever the family has in terms of time, energy and money. Importance of meal planning Balanced diet for all the members of the family. Nutrient requirement for each member of a family can be met with proper meal planning. Otherwise, a meal served may be adequate for one member and inadequate for the other. For example, the meal may be adequate for an adolescent boy and indigestible for the old. Therefore, a good meal planning takes care of the nutritional requirements of the members of all age groups. Saving the money, energy and time. A housewife can save time, money and energy by meal planning. Saving of fuel. Fuel is also served, saved by meal planning. Example, if boiled potatoes are required in the morning and boiled colocasia are required for dinner, lots of fuel can be saved by boiling both together. Variety in meals. Variety can be added in the diet by meal planning. While planning meals for a week, a housewife can add variety to food by selecting different foods for each day. Control on food budget. By meal planning, budget of the family can also be controlled. While planning for a week, the housewife can add costly foodstuffs like cheese, dry fruits, etc. on one day, cheap seasonal fruits and vegetables on the rest of the days. In this way, the total expenditure of the week will be in accordance with the budget. Tasty and attractive foods. Food can be made attractive and tasty. By adding variety to the taste, color, texture and cooking methods, monotony in foods can be broken and members can relish the food a lot. Use of leftovers. By planning meals, leftovers can be used properly. Example, leftover dal and dry vegetable at dinner can be used in parathas and patties in breakfast. Personal likes and dislikes. Personal likes and dislikes of the family members can be taken care of in meal planning by including foods of their preferences in one meal or the other. A person does not relish however nutritious it may be if it is not of his or her liking. The day as a unit. Meal planning is made by considering a day as a single unit Hence, it never happens that we eat a lot in one meal and don't feel hungry at all for the second meal. Also, if one meal is deficient in nutritional value, it is compensated in the second meal so that a balanced meal can be prepared for the day. Factors affecting meal planning Nutritional adequacy This is the most important factor which means that the nutritional requirements of all the family members are fulfilled. For example, a growing child needs more protein, a pregnant and lactating woman needs calcium, etc. While planning meals, one should include food items from various food groups, that is, energy giving foods, body building foods, and protective and regulating foods. Age People normally eat according to their age. In a family, the diet of various members of different age groups differs in quantity. A newborn baby drinks only milk. A small child's meal is also of very small quantity. An adolescent eats still more in amount and variety of foods. Similarly, older people should eat less food and also that they prefer soft and easy to digest foods. Sex Sex is another factor which determines the dietary intake. 
dietary requirement of adolescent and adult males are more than their female counterparts physical activity the kind of work a person does affects the kind and amount of food they need to take recommended dietary allowance is different for people engaged in different activities a laborer not only eats more quantity but needs more energy because he is engaged in hard work his body uses up more energy while performing hard work so to plan for such a person one should include more energy giving foods in the diet economic considerations money available to the family to be spent on food is another major factor foods like milk cheese meat fruits nuts etc are expensive however alternative sources like toned milk seasonal fruits and vegetables are less costly and at the same time nutritious one can therefore plan a balanced diet to suit every budget time energy and skill considerations while planning the meals you should consider the resources like time energy and skill available to the family meals can be elaborate with different dishes but one can simplify them by cooking a simple but nutritious dish for example a working mother could prepare a paustic pulao instead of preparing three or four items for dinner seasonal availability some foods are available in summers while some in winters the off season foods are expensive and less nutritious while those in season are fresh nutritious tasty and cheap hence while planning seasonal foods should be used religion region cultural patterns traditions and customs regional factors influence meal planning for example a north indian will consume more of wheat while those near the coastal region will consume more of coconut fish etc similarly your staple food would be rice if you are a south indian religious beliefs prevalent in the family also have an influence for example a vegetarian will not have any meat or meat product variety in color and texture examining the following two menus which one is better in menu 1 we include rice chapati arhar dal pumpkin and curd plus salad in the menu 2 we include rice chapati rajma fried ladies finger carrot raita and salad if we observe the second one as it has variety in terms of color texture flavor and method of preparation these factors help to make meals more appealing attractive and hence more acceptable likes and dislikes of the individuals the food served should cater to the likes and dislikes of individual family members it is often better to change the form of some particularly nutritious food item rather than omitting it completely for example if someone in the family does not like milk you can give it in the form of curd paneer etc similarly if one does not want to take green leafy vegetables in cooked form alternative would be to mix with flour and make into parathas or puris or as cutlets or pakoras it can also be given in the form of koftas idlis vadas etc satiety value while planning meals take care of to select foods which provide satiety value meals which produce inadequate satiety will lead to onset of hunger pains which in turn will affect the working capacity and efficiency of a person satiety means feeling of fullness after eating modification of family meals for various age groups meal planning is an art and science in itself what is to be cooked is decided by the homemaker from the available food items but the meal planning is affected by various factors like nutritional requirements budget season etc these factors vary from family to family the nutritional requirements of all the family members can be met 
by varying the quantity of food items and by combination of foods. Include food items from different food groups to get variety and maximum nutrients. Consider a family having members in various age groups that is parents, grandparents, a school going child and an adolescent girl. Now you know all of them have different requirements. If you have to cook for them, how will you go about it? Will you cook specially for each member according to the individual nutritional needs and cook a common meal and serve according to the various nutritional needs? Definitely the second alternative is better choice. Where are you going to choose the menu? You are modifying the same meal according to the needs of each member. This is what is known as diet modification. This can be achieved through two methods through modification in the diet. Diet modification means serving the meal cooked for the family to another member after varying its quantity, quality and frequency of eating. Quantitative modification of diet. This refers to increase or decrease in the number of times a meal is taken and the portion size. For example, a pregnant woman, sick people or old persons need to eat smaller meals but at shorter intervals. That is, they may need 6 to 8 meals instead of 4 meals a day. Similarly, adolescent boy needs larger portion at each meal and also more frequent meals to meet their nutritional needs. Persons who are dieting are advised to reduce the amount of food eaten at each meal but not reduce the frequency of meals. This will force the body to use stored reserves which will help in reducing the body weight. Qualitative modification of the diet. This refers to the change in nutrients, consistency, flavor, amount of spices and fiber content of the diet. For example, increased protein requirement for a pregnant woman can be met by increasing the quantity of protein rich foods in her diet. Mothers take some boiled dal in a separate bowl, mash it and feed it to the babies between the age of 6 months to 1 year. Dal does not contain any spices except salt and turmeric. Slightly older children are fed well cooked mashed khichdi. Older people need a diet soft in consistency and less spicy. This is qualitative modification of the diet. Now modification in terms of frequency. A person whose requirements are increased but they are not able to increase the quantity of food in original meals. You will suggest an increase in the number of meals instead. This means they should take something in between the main meals. This is diet modification in terms of frequency. Through the food exchange method. If you are modifying the same meal for different family members, then how will you decide how much of one item is equivalent to the other one? If you are not sure about how to go about exchanging one food item with the other in correct proportion, then you may not be able to fulfill everyone's requirement correctly. For example, if you are exchanging milk with an egg, then you should know how much milk is equivalent to one egg or if one does not want to eat egg in that case how much pulses should be given instead. Here food exchanges help you to modify the diet for an individual according to the needs, likes and dislikes, food habits and help you to make the diet more flexible and interesting. A sample menu of a common meal while planning meals for different family members, keep in mind the nutrient content of the food. You want that the common menu should be served to everyone. But this does not work out as the needs of the different individuals vary. One easy way is to start with a sample menu for a healthy adult engaged in normal activity. Plan for one person, decide how much to provide at different meals according to the requirements. This becomes the reference menu for different family members according to their specific requirements. Menu for an adult man or woman. The sample menu for an adult man and a woman is 
suggested for early morning tea can be given one cup each to man and woman whereas breakfast if aloo paratha and sprouted pulse raita boiled egg are given man can be given two parathas and woman can be given one and sprouted pulse can be given uh, to man in a big katori whereas in a medium katori to woman and one boiled egg each and for lunch chapatis with methi alu and vegetable urad dal and salad and fruit four chapatis for man and two chapatis for woman whereas methi alu and vegetable uh, one small katori for woman and medium katori for man urad dal one big katori and uh, one medium katori for woman salad can be given half plate to each and fruit can be given equally and evening if suji upma is made both can be given one big katori and with one tea cup dinner chapatis can be given equally as two chapatis each with half plate of rice for man and quarter plate of rice for woman and rajma one big katori for man and one big katori for woman cauliflower and any other vegetable one small katori each and one medium fruit and if it is custard then one medium katori for both of them the energy content of diet for an adult woman is nearly 2/3 of that for an adult man and protein requirement is a little less but her diet should be slightly richer in iron and vitamin c we have provided her with less amount of cereals as compared to adult man so that decrease in energy content and she is also given less quantity of pulses in order to reduce the protein content of her diet but to compensate for her vitamin c and iron requirements she is given more sprouted pulse raita methi aloo vegetable as compared to sample menu for a man now modification for a pregnant woman during pregnancy the need of calories proteins calcium iron vitamin a and vitamin c are increased for healthy growth and development of fetus also you should give her more water and fiber as she may suffer from problem of constipation but since she is not able to eat much at a time you should give her small frequent meals keeping all these points in mind the menu has to be modified the calorie requirement of pregnant lady is 13% less than that of an adult man and can be done by reducing the quantity of cereals in her menu as compared to the reference menu protein requirement is slightly higher which can be compensated by giving her more protein rich foods the frequency of meals should also be increased as compared to sample menu activity can be done by visiting a pregnant woman and recording the or uh, specific information related to the foods eaten nutrients present and any suggestions for improvement modification for lactating mother nutrition for lactating mother is very important as the newborn baby relies completely on the mother for nutritional requirements inadequate food intake reduces the milk secretion her requirement is even greater than that of the pregnant woman so while modifying her diet you will take care that her meals are rich in energy protein calcium vitamin a and vitamin c she should be given more foods like milk curd pulse which are rich in protein calcium and vitamin a further to compensate for her requirement an additional serving of egg and vitamin a rich foods like mangoes or carrots are to be given to her as compared to sample menu the frequency of meals too should be increased to fulfill her extra needs again an activity can be done to see her dietary pattern and suggestions can be made to improve the meals modification of diet for an infant mother's milk is sufficient to meet the nutritional requirements of a baby only up to 6 months so after 6 months baby can be given liquids like juice soups and milk and 6 to 9 months 
semi solid foods can be included like porridge kheer mashed banana and mashed potatoes and 9 to 12 months solid foods can be included like khichdi egg chapati vegetables and fruits so this can be the weaning pattern for an infant by 6 months they are put on weaning foods to take care of their rapid growth and development weaning is a gradual process of shifting the child from breast milk to a normal household diet a good diet during infancy is very important since the foundation of future health is laid during this stage they now need weaning foods rich in proteins vitamin a especially calcium the calorie requirement of infants is nearly 1/4 and protein is 1/3 of that of adults but they need more calcium than adults so they should be given more foods like milk egg green leafy vegetables etc modification for children and adolescents a well balanced diet must be given to all age groups so for a preschooler high calorie high protein diet rich in calcium and vitamin a should be given and school going children should be given high calorie high protein diet with plenty of vitamins and minerals and adolescents high calorie and high protein diet rich in calcium and iron modification for old people many physiological changes occurring during old age affects nutritional requirements they need less energy and fats as compared to an adult man but proteins and other nutrient requirements remain the same they need lots of water and fiber to check the problem of constipation they also may suffer from chewing problem so giving them soft and well cooked foods is recommended needs for special diet a normal diet satisfies the nutritional needs of healthy individual but when a person falls sick there is malfunctioning of the parts of the body therefore the nutritional needs of a sick person changes for example in diabetes pancreas do not produce insulin which is needed to digest sugars in such a case presence of normal amount of sugar in the food will be harmful to the system similarly in jaundice there is malfunctioning of the liver hence digestion of fats will be affected and presence of normal amount of fats will be harmful to the health and similarly in other disorders so there are some reasons to change the diet that is to maintain good nutritional status to correct nutritional deficiencies to provide a change in the consistency of diet whether liquid or semi solid and to bring change in the body weight if required therapeutic diet is a special diet given to a person suffering from disease to facilitate recovery it is a modification of normal diet when sugars are withdrawn from food insulin is not required to digest them when fats are taken off the diet liver can relax and take time to recover drinking fluids can help to overcome losses of waters and minerals so some points to remember when modifying diet of a patient some points are to be kept in mind do not plan a completely different diet it should be a normal diet which a person eats daily try to include only those foods which are liked by the patients otherwise food may not be eaten well so the meals in an attractive way to keep them feel like eating the modification in diet can be done in terms of consistency nutrient content interval and frequency of feeding so consistency can be in liquid semi solid and solid and modification in nutrient content can be depending upon the nature of the disease and modification in interval and frequency of feeding can be person can eat 3 to 4 meals a day normally that is breakfast lunch tea and dinner in sickness you find it difficult to eat the amount you usually eat at one time however the body needs all the nutrients in correct amounts so small amounts of food at intervals of 2 to 3 hours may be given so as many as 8 to 10 small meals 
in a day instead of 3 to 4 meals facilitates speedy recovery.